time to get your garden going and plant your tomatoes. Here is what you need to know to tend or take care of your tomatoes as they grow. Upkeep on your tomato plants does not take a lot of time. I spend about 10 minutes a day taking care of my tomato plants, or well, my garden. Occasionally, I spend a little bit more time because I'm picking tomatoes or other vegetables or things. And occasionally, I skip a day, although that's not very often, and it is not on the days that it is really, really super hot outside. I use the time that I spend in my garden to clear my head. If you have small children, I would recommend assigning one of them to do the chore in the garden too, meaning that you do it with them, that they're in charge of the chore and you're just along to chat or maybe pick a few small weeds. Raising kids is way more important than raising tomatoes. So use the raising tomatoes to help you do a better job raising your kids. 10 minutes a day talking to someone is truly enough to strengthen your bond with them. So it's multitasking, gardening, and spending time with your kids. Yes, it is faster to just do it yourself, but children need to be needed. They need to feel like they're important to the family and that they're contributing. Even when they say that they hate it and they complain, they still need to be needed. Hi, I'm Amy on A Lolly Life. In the summer, when my garden is growing, you know how I measure myself? From my head to my toes. Get it? To my toes, tomatoes. Yeah? <laughs> Once the chance of frost has passed and your tomatoes have had a chance to acclimate to the weather outside, then you can remove your milk jug, hootis thingamajig, the little greenhouse thing that helps your tomatoes. If you put that on there, then you can go ahead and remove that. There are five things that you should do every day when you go out to take a look at your garden, and the first one is water, if needed. There are two things to take into consideration when I try to decide whether I need to water my plants. Is the ground moist under the top layer? So you just scratch back the top layer and is the ground moist right underneath? Because if it is moist, then you probably don't need to water. However, the other thing that you need to take into consideration is how hot the weather is. If it has been a real scorcher of a day yesterday, or today is supposed to be a real scorcher of a day, then even if the ground is a little bit moist, then I will still water it. Because having a little extra water helps plants deal with the super, super hot days just a little bit better. When I plant my tomatoes, I will mound the ground in a ring around the base of the plant. And so when I water, the water stays inside the ring and just soaks into the ground there at the roots. Most plants don't need to be watered on the leaves. And actually some of the times it's not beneficial to water them on the leaves. You can use a sprinkler to water, but it takes a lot longer. You want the water to get all the way down to the tips of the roots. If all you do is water the surface and an inch down the ground is still hard and dry, then you didn't water enough. Also, I use peat moss to keep the moisture in the ground. There's lots of ways that you can cover the ground to keep moisture in the ground, but peat moss makes the garden look really pretty and it does a very good job of keeping the water in the ground and keeping the weeds down. I usually will set the water down and then wait for a few minutes and then move it to the next plant. And while it's sitting there watering, I will take the time needed to do the other things that I need to do in the garden. And so that brings us to number two, the second thing that you need to do while you're in the garden every day. And that is pulling weeds. If you pull a handful of small weeds every day, then the weeds don't get out of control. You should just kind of make it a game that you should always be able to find five or six weeds. It's okay if they're just teeny, teeny, tiny, but if you keep up with them every day, then they never get out of control. The third thing you need to do is pinch off the sap suckers. The sap suckers are the little leaves and branches that start to grow between the main stalk and one of the branches. By pinching those off, you allow your plant to work on tomatoing instead of growing lots of little fluffy branches. It makes the tomatoes easier to pick since the plant isn't as bushy, but the main reason for pinching off sap suckers is that doing that allows the plant to produce more tomatoes since it isn't working so hard on growing new branches. You wanna get these sap suckers when they're young and easy to pinch off. At some point, they're big enough that you will actually do more damage to the plant by removing it, and it's probably just better to leave it. Be careful you don't pinch off the top of the plant. That will stunt the growth of the plant. As a side note, if you are growing the determinate variety of tomato, which is a little bush tomato and they usually only grow a few feet tall, then you should disregard this. This does not apply to the determinate variety of tomato plants, only the indeterminate ones. 
The fourth thing that you need to be doing is making sure that your tomato branches are supported in the tomato cage. You need to move the branches up through the tomato cage so that they're supported well. If you miss one of the branches and it starts growing out off to the middle of nowhere and you can't really bend it back through the thing without breaking the branch off, then you can thread it back through on the next layer up. Doing this helps support the tomato plant and the branches because when they have a lot of heavy fruit on them, then they tend to bend down quite a bit and they can break off if they're not supported well. The fifth thing you should do is talk to your tomatoes. Really, you should name them too. Like that would be a good idea. I like the names Tomato Babado and Redly Bedly, but you know, so rhyming names are good, but you should name your tomatoes and you should talk to them. Well, Tomato Babado, aren't you looking lovely today? Look at this, you have some little flowers. I'm so proud of you. Tell each of them that they're doing a good job and compliment them on any flowers or little tomatoes that they might be growing. Tell them to have a beautiful day. Redly Bedly, look at this, you have even more little flowers. I'm so happy. Look at these cute little leaves and you smell so good. I hope you have a beautiful day. And if you get all dried out, I will come out and water you. You're doing just fine. Yep, you're doing just fine. Do tomatoes and potatoes have anything in common besides the fact that they're both vegetables? Yes, yes they do. Toes. Actually, tomatoes, I guess, aren't vegetables. They're kind of a uh, fruit, but we're going with it. With that joke, we come to the end of another episode of A Lolly Life. I believe in you. Get up and try again when you fall down. I love you. Bye.